Well hello, good afternoon guys and gals, down to the man shed again. Uh, train's running without sound, so you can hear me. Uh, got a DB Schenker 66 running with the uh, what is my favourite wagons of the month at the moment, the Tipok uh, by Dapol, lovely. And uh, quite stunning with the blue and the red together. And there is a DRS 37 pulling the uh, DRS 66. But this video really is not uh, so much about trains, although uh, there's, a, there's a couple of uh, videos that I'll put at the end with it, with these particular trains running with their sounds on. This is to talk uh, or to show you, uh, if you keep watching the video, uh, my other interests. Um, down here in the man shed, uh, Robert of Robert's Train Sheds, uh, in some of my videos he did notice that I had other uh, items around the place of, mod of uh, models. And that's what I did before I got into uh, the current modern day uh, image modelling that I'm doing at the moment here in the shed. Uh, believe it or not, up in my loft from maybe almost 30 years ago there is a layout up there, incomplete obviously, and it's a HO continental with uh, overhead wire and everything because uh, which I was building using Roco and River Rossi and Lima uh, motive power in DC at the, you know wasn't DCC at the time so it's your conventional loft layout on DC never got to complete it because uh, my daughter came along instead so uh, was <laughs> and uh, so ended up putting a halt to that so it's been in limbo ever since uh, and even though now she's grown up and uh, left the house and uh, you'll see in the other videos the room that I uh, have my model stored in is her ex-bedroom hence the wallpaper that will uh, shock you but there we are we're talking about a young girl's uh, bedroom which I just never got round to uh, decorating before I quickly stuck my models in there quickly I was hoping to have this uh, layout in there and have it bigger but um, the wife wanted it kept as a bedroom so we do have a bed in there but I have got some of my models in there so when the sister-in-law stays or whatever she's got a she's got to be careful of some of my models that are around the place but uh, hey ho but just as well because with DCC sound uh, one bedroom next to the other bedroom with when the, when these guys have all their sounds on uh, just as well I don't think I think the wife would have killed me because she, she would want to go to bed and uh, if I wanted to play trains and have the sounds on it's just or even just going around they make the noise don't they anyway so that's that's what this one's around about not so much about the trains so maybe I should call the video uh, trains planes and automobiles because um, I'm showing you my other models uh, as I say I think it's what Robert said oh can I can you do a video showing some of the other models so I'll show you here uh, the shelves that are absolutely full of models here down in the man shed including underneath the layout behind the curtain yeah so here we are underneath the curtain um, and as you can see all these cupboards uh, excuse me they are filled with uh, models I've built a mixture of uh, plastic models I've built, die cast models from the likes of Cornby and uh, Hobby Master and uh, small JC Wings aircraft things. That's a plastic one I built. Um, the Flying Fortress behind it, another model I built. So although it seems a mess, they're all safely stored underneath there. It's just uh, they're just homes for the spiders at the moment. But yeah, lo lots of models there and tanks. I've uh, got the big old King Tiger tank underneath there and the, uh, I think the, uh, that one you can just see in the shadows is a remote controlled tanks. Uh, anyway, so that's, yeah, there's a lightning there. But uh, they look like they're crammed in and they are, but they're all safe. Just homes for spiders at the moment. Anyway, and now I'm going to bring you up to the top area, which I think I've shown you before. So again, a mixture of um, some die-cast models uh, from Corgi. Uh, another little three engines SM79, which you'll see up in my daughter's room, which I've gained the little airfix kit I built. Messerschmitt 109 is from a company called uh, Century 21 Toys. They no longer exist anymore. Um, plastic Concorde there, and again, the big Junkers there is going... Um, 
Uh, the little Lysander, as you know, the little Airfix kit. Uh, where's the one? That's the little Defiant. A very bad Airfix kit. The nose, look at the nose of that Defiant. How could you get an engine in there? So It was so badly moulded that I didn't realise how inaccurate a mould of the Defiant that is. Anyway, but still. So then we go round here and yeah, Messerschmitt's uh, yeah, some, so there's a mixture of plastic, a mixture of die cast with the Congley lane. Uh, that Mustang there is a Corgi. The Spitfire and the Hurricane and the Mosquitoes is a Corgi, so they're metal. The Hercules, the two, the two versions of the Hercules, they're the ones that, you know, I've built them. Uh, yeah, it's a mixture of aeroplanes I've built, the Liberator there, Screaming Mimi, I've, I've built her, there's another, there's a Corgi Liberator there, big Mustang, there's a range of helicopters over there, let's see if I can put some light on the subject, there we go, and of course this huge F-16 jet, and then again, underneath there again is some more models of the Pacific fleet uh, uh, and some German ones there but more of the American and Japanese there that's that and that one's the first uh, two trains you know my DCC world you know that's what I started off with my DCC layout with the two little engines there little uh, bath old bathroom cabinet I've got here in the shed there's a mixture of uh, 172nd uh, models of uh, you know armoured tanks German and uh, British so, so again some I've built some that you buy made by dragons and I tell you you know the quality of the dragon sometimes with my eyesight as I say getting old some of these dragon kits uh, let's see if I'll bring out the tiger you, or the panther, like the panther. You, I'll tell you guys, you know, you couldn't make you couldn't make a better job of it yourself. You know, they they are absolutely fantastic kits. Well, they're not, they're not kits. You buy them as they are, all painted. And uh, I mean, down here, the little truck and the and this this little jeep I built. I mean, like my gosh, your eyesight, guys. You know, it's it's so tiny. You know, I mean, look, there's me thumb. You know. <laughs> I can't see to do it nowadays, you know, so I don't model them. But uh, these kits are by Dragon, and you, you can't you can't build them better yourself. So uh, why struggle, you know? I wanted a kit. There's all the uh, tigers, king tigers, and panthers, yag panthers. And then up here, you've got the self-propelled guns and the stat scout cars and everything up here. The Stug. Yeah, so don't bother, you know, if, you, if your modelling skills aren't that good, and mine aren't now, so not, you know, don't despair, because um, the Dragon, that's the company that produces most of these uh, armoured vehicles, you know, they are second to none in their quality of builds, they're brilliant. Now, yeah, so right, back with the trains again, guys, but uh, just say, just to watch these, just go around for a few seconds, but basically... Uh, the rest of this video will be an insight into my world uh, of how I enjoy my modelling. That does look nice, the old red shanker against the blue of the Tipok. Tipok. As I say, my uh, wagon of the moment, as you may have guessed by looking at all my videos. But they are well done Dapo, they've done a lovely job there. And of course, yeah, 37 DRS, China 66 DRS with the end of train lamp on it. So there you go. No, no need to worry about speed mapping or consists with that uh, train. It's, it's actually a you know a genuine train. You, it has happened. There is a video out there showing a 37 pulling a 66 along. You know. Nice livery, the two of them together. The same, the same uh, compass livery on both of them. But right, okay, so what I'll do now, just to sign off, I'll stick the sound on 
and then uh, if you stick with the video um, following on from them is up in my daughter's bedroom with the Larry uh, wallpaper and showing you more of my uh, models that uh, I like to keep out the shed away from the spiders because they do live with the spiders down here we all suffer from that I'm sure so where are we The 37 with a double iPhone speaker and has had that um, uh, modification getting rid of that stupid bracket that's in there that holds the standard speaker in there. And that's the Schenker. And before I sign off I'll just show you I've got a body shell of the 37 in, which uh, uh, waiting in the wings and I'll show you how I attach the, the fan which you then remove so I'll just show you that before I sign off here you are guys this is the uh, this is what you take out from the 37 body as you can see with a speaker attached to it so the speaker you know the sound comes out through there but the fan the grill is there no and this is just going to come up into plastic so what you do you get rid of this take the fan assembly out and what I put, what I did to try and make a, di a job is uh, let's bring it up into the light, and there you are. You see, so the, the fan is not glued to the grill. I've got wires that stuck to the body that the fan it's then itself is stuck to, and that uh, so that that keeps it uh, in place. So that when you see it, when you view it from the top, the fan's there complete, including the uh, the little uh, rivet in the middle, which it pivots on in, in in the real thing. Come on, focus, focus. Doesn't want to focus, guys. What's going on? No, it's not having it. Oh, all right. So yeah, so you can see the the, the bit of wire that I used to glue in place. So that's glued to the body shell. And then so the very, very tip is glued to the fan. And that makes it good for up there. So there's no glue touching the fan to the uh, Folkwetch grill. So that's, uh, yeah, there you go. Okie dokie, that's it. So that's how, why the 37 is such a noisy little beast. It's got twin iPhone speaker in there that when you remove that uh, speaker assembly, you've got room to put the double iPhone speaker in there and because you've got rid of that bracket the sand can come out now and uh, yes she's not even at full volume you can adjust the sound volume since she's not okay so if you stick with the video guys uh, as i say you'll uh, i'll open you into the world of peter dixon and his modeling that i've done in the past that does look nice Right, okay, so stay tuned guys, all right, so that's it for now. You think I'm probably keep making videos every five minutes, but I won't do, I'll, I'll leave it at this for a while unless I've got something really important to show you. All right, okay guys, bye. Right, so this is the Porsche Ferrari Testarossa. Um, everything obviously opens and closes on it for the, to show the engine detail, all that sort of stuff up on it and you've got to turn the key to open the door side is all fully detailed so this was a company called Porsche now part of Hornby and lock the door that's it that's the door locked again so that's the Ferrari Testarossa quite uh, all die cast uh, obviously assembling required but uh, die cast uh, pre-painted uh, body you just got to put it all together the engine the interior the windows everything i think even the if i remember even the lights Let's see if i can do that yeah the lights come up so yeah that was the car of its day the testarossa wide as a house and now then this one robert you would know again what this one's all about. I believe you have the Alfa Romeo 
Again, this is the Porsche uh, 1935 Mercedes. Um, so yes, yeah, there's, there's my my baby. Took me a year to build this one. You know what it's all about, Robert. These cars. Everything you have to find. I mean, so many modelling skills you have to learn about. You know, the doing the upholstery or doing the, the this does go up if I bother to unstrap it, which I, to be honest, I don't want to do. The wheels with their individual spokes took a, a month to build, and there's six of them because there's two for the spare. Uh, the front ones, obviously, yeah. The seats are all leather, and they're sprung. Yeah, because there's there's sponge and there's uh, foam underneath there. The windows, uh, I'll I'll pull it up, but you see the handle. They do operate, so you know windows wind up and down. The doors obviously open. Uh, I don't know if I can do it by opening. Will that work? Possibly not. Yeah, there we go. And there we are. So all this leather work you have to put in and get the moulding right and say the windows, you know, uh, will this one work? Yeah, you see? So, and the door handle itself operates. Probably won't do it now that I'm trying to show off. There we are, that's the door shut. Um, underneath the bonnet, fully, fully um, built engine. Uh, this, this try and... Uh, Lift it un underneath, and you can see some of the bits and pieces underneath the dual exhaust pipes. Yeah, there you go. So there, that's what it's like underneath, guys. It all works. The brake pedals work because the brakes work. Believe it or not, there's a. You may be able not to see it, but there is a cable coming to the rear wheel here, and it, it does work. Yes, I just done undone the brackets, so this should concertina up. To reveal the engine with all the uh, pipe work and the steering column and so on and so forth and obviously the exhaust is on the other side so yeah yeah it took a took about a year to build this um yeah thousands of thousands of parts i think at least two thousand parts let's see if i can get a picture of the front with a huge the headlights do work i've uh, but I've lost the starting handle because the starting handle, if you put the starting handle in, uh, it would actually turn the engine. Because if I took off the cylinder head, you would uh, you would see the mechanism of the pistons going up and down. And likewise, underneath, if I took the sump off, you'd see the big ends of the pistons as they go around as you crank the uh, the starter motor handle. But I've lost the starter motor handle. There's a key, uh, the key in the dashboard. If you if I had it, you put it in there. Um, and the, the lights would come on if you put the key in because it completes the circuit. But yeah, so that's it. So that's the Porsche, Mercedes 1935. Used the wallpaper because I got to get round to doing it, but this was once my daughter's room and I've just quickly stuck some shelves up. Uh, these are die cast uh, models, scale 1200, made by Gemini Jets and JC Wings. And basically it's the whole range or what we call Union Tail aircraft that flew. I mean, obviously including Concorde now, which doesn't fly anymore. But as you can see on the tail, the Union Jack. So this is everything that was underneath the uh, British Airways in my lifetime. Uh, obviously from the Jumbo there, and then the uh, huge Airbus there, that one there. And of course, the wonderful Concorde. So yes, I've made these models. These are, you know, you buy as collector models, but I've, what I did is I collected all the Union Tail ones that were around at the time. So that's what this little lot is. Collection of uh, 143 cars, although there is a 118th car in the corner there. The whole idea of this lot, guys, is that the very cars at the very back are Corgis uh, from the white Porsche there number 60 and then uh, I think it's a Lotus and then a Ferrari I can't remember and then another Ferrari at the end the red one there they're all your Hornby models from uh, 50 odd years ago maybe longer they, I didn't have these I had these originally when I was a young boy and I liked them so much that uh, when I discovered that you could still get them and uh, got these nice little mint models which considering they're 45 plus years of age, that's amazing. 
um, just to remind me of my youth and what I used to play with. Now interestingly, right, so this, this red Ferrari on the end is the Corgi at the back there, but this is a modern day model of that same car, but obviously with uh, much higher detail. So whereas the Corgi was a model that you played with as a kid, that is a scale model. Uh, okay, you know, not really to be played with. Similarly, all these cars, they're all the same modern version of what the Corgi did at the back there. So there's the Ferrari at the back there. They're what they called sharp mouth is designed to be played with. These ones, the two of them, no, they're not. But they're highly detailed. They've got wire wheels and everything, yeah? In their 143 scale. So then we come to the Porsche. My favourite one of the lot, the white Porsche. The Corgi model at the back that you played with. Then a modern day uh, representation, a uh, Chinese one, but it's all highly detailed, the wheels. And then this company, Minicraft, produced it with everything, all the well built, um, all the whistles and bells, you know, the engine at the back there, it's got the bonnet off the back. Just have it as display there. And that's how she was. So that's, so we got uh, the different sizes there, different scales from the original Hornby uh, Corgi at the back there. Then that one I think was a, a Chinese import. And that one is Minicraft in 118th scale. So that's that's the top there with all the racing cars and the old corgis. Now we come down to uh, cars of my youth and well, of my life basically. And we're looking at the Sierras, the full Granadas, the consoles, the Cortinas, the Escorts up to Mark three, you know, Mark ones, Mark twos, Mark threes, the Capris. Yeah. Fabulous. Ford Cortina, the early Ford Cortina, little one at the back there, Ford Angular, Ford Fiesta. I haven't got every single one, but uh, basically, you know, I remember all of these cars being on the road in my lifetime. And uh, yeah, just looking at them again. Ford Cortina there. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Ford Granada. Then we come down. So that's the English. So they're all Fords. Now we come down to the Vauxhalls and the BMCs and uh, BMC, uh, is it uh, British Leyland? Yeah, because they've got the Morris Marina there, the Hillman Imp, the Avenger, the Princess, the Austin Allegro. Come on, all these names, you, you guys of my age, you'll know all these cars. And then there's the Vauxhalls there. Cavaliers, the old uh, reps car of the day, Carlton's, a couple of minis at the back there. Come down further and there we go, uh, sports cars. Jag, Mark II's, Aston Martin, uh, obviously the E-Type, you must have an E-Type. Couple of uh, Rovers there, the P6 and the earlier P5, I think that's called, lovely car that. In the back there, little two-seater sports cars from the Morgan the Lotus, the Austin Healey, the Triumphs, the Stag, the Spitfire, and the MGB. All, all you guys of my age, you know all these cars. Well, we go to foreign now. So Alfa Romeos and German BMWs. All 143 scale, the Citroen, my little Cinquecento, the original Cinquecento, Volvos. The Citroen's at the back there, the lovely Citroen at the back there. What a model that is, or oh, what a car design that was, fantastic. The lower shelf now, we come to the big boys and the supercars. Obviously the Lamborghini in the middle there in orange. Um, that one is the McLaren. And that one there on the end is the Paganini. All these supercars. And then down on the thing, there we are, we have the uh, Bugatti. Uh, we have what we have there. We have um, um, uh, Aston Martin, Ferrari, La Ferrari, Ford G, the new Fords. Going down further still, we have the Audi 10, we have a Porsche. Hey, oh, Mustang there, but two bubble cars. Yes, again, cars of my youth. I remember seeing these around the old Messerschmitt there and the Isetta at the back there. So there's a whole cabinet there, guys, from one forty-fifth scale 
or 43 scale I think it is to the 1 18th scale at the bottom that's one cabinet there I was there um, obviously E-type Jag in 1 18th scale completely detailed I mean right even down to the wire wheels this is made by a company called AutoArt and they are absolutely gorgeous they're, they're, you know if I open up the box everything work, um, opens on it you, the doors open the hood shows and reveal, uh, reveals a very detailed engine now and underneath yeah a rover a good old police rover I think it's a P6 isn't it uh, I remember these going around very well in London. I don't know if they was all the same livery all around the country, but because of that stripe, we used to call them jam sandwiches. Yeah, the old police for their jam sandwich. And why is the Rover there? Well, because underneath the Mark II Jag, the old bank robber's cars, isn't it? I mean, but well, mind you, having said that, it's the best looking Jaguar that they've done. I love it. Again, you know, highly detailed car with its, you know, spoke wheels. Yeah, it's all there, all very done. All the doors open, the bonnet opens to reveal the engine. And then underneath there, although it's not the James Bond car, obviously the James Bond uh, or the Aston Martin. Again, all highly detailed, but I keep them in their glass covers. Uh, so that's that last range of the cars, 1 18th scale by AutoArt. I said uh, I was a modeler. Uh, this is my little diorama of uh, an SM79 uh, with a little die cast truck which is a um, Russian truck believe it or not but uh, it fits in well with the Italian look so that's my uh, so that's an, the old uh, SM79 uh, I think it is the old uh, torpedo bomber that was used in the Mediterranean when the Italians were still at war with us in the Second World War even until they came out of the war so that is uh, a kit, a plastic kit, with uh, extra bits added, what we call um, photo etch parts and uh, things like that. So that's that one. And then next to this one, my big boy, this is a Revell 132nd kit of the JU88. Uh, oh, and a little Kuba wagon there, which is a 132nd scale wagon that I painted up together with the officer. So she's there she is and uh, why the batteries you think uh, hmm let's have a look and see if this works is it gonna work? I've got to get the batteries in oh there we go yeah a couple of little a uh, couple of engines put into a uh, couple of electric motors um, this all this diorama here the wires disappear underneath come up for <laughs> come up the wheels and go into the uh, into the air engines, and they feed a couple of little electric motors that uh, Airfix did supply when they did an Airfix kit. And it's a tiny little motor, but it fits comfortably in this uh, nacelle there. So that's it. So that's the JU88 with its little figures on its own little diorama. Off here now, uh, my uh, these are 148 scaled planes, uh, Revell kit. This one, the Flying Fortress. Uh, extra bits added, you know, photo etch parts and uh, resin guns and things like that. But that's 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 148 scale coming along. And then we've got the Lancaster. Maybe I should turn this light off. Might be better. Oh, it's not very good. But uh, yeah, one the Lancaster, and then along that that the Liberator. These are all 148 scale kits. Quite a um, a raunchy. Uh, uh, I don't know, you know, aircraft markings there. It's called uh, Flat Alley. <laughs> it's a young lady with her legs apart, but there you are. That this is actually uh, uh, an aircraft. You know, it's not made up. It was an aircraft that flew. Uh, so yeah, and uh, again, this one, lovely Lou was a Lancaster uh, that survived the war. Um, and then after the war was used in weather uh, duties, you know, sort of uh, weather forecasting for the metro uh, meteorology, or oh, I can't say it, for the Met anyway, until she was finally uh, broken up. But this lovely Lou did survive the war. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, 
Chow Hound unfortunately didn't. I don't think she made it all the way through the war. But that's what Ravel make this kit. So I love the colour, you know, I love the scheme. So that's the scheme I did it in. Die cast. Some, some of the models on this shelves are, you know, um, Corgis. The Sunderland was a new casting by Corgi. And to be honest, yes, there's an Airfix Sunderland, but the casting is so old now that uh, you couldn't do a better job than what they actually made in metal. So rather than go for all the pain of trying to build this Sunderland kit, and I did the, Sun I did the uh, Catalina, and that was fun. I thought, I'm not going through that again. And then they come out with the Sunderland, with it, you know, and you think to yourself, well, you know what, you can't do better. Uh, Spirit, Gemini Jets, Gemini, it's not a company called Gemini, makes the uh, Spitfire, and this one is the Spirit of Kent. And the reason I've got that one is because if you look at my profile uh, picture, it's the actual Spirit of Kent is the Spitfire I'm actually sitting in, in the Biggin Hill Heritage Hangar. So I thought, well, I've got to have it because they've actually produced a model of that particular aircraft that I sat in, so there we are. Fuel bells are there, good old Airfix kit built that one. And another Lancaster. Lancaster, this one is uh, 178 scale, the Airfix kit, and it's under G for George. G for George is now preserved in Australia, so she went through the war. But here, she's in the markings of when she was halfway through its uh, wartime career, so she hasn't got all her bomb runs on there, but uh, yeah. Again, other little bits and pieces like photo etch plants, uh, parts for the guns and things. Right, we come down to the next shelf. And this little diorama, this is all plastic and uh, resin kits. Uh, my little fuel bales are at the back there, which you know what, it shouldn't actually be there because you certainly wouldn't have a fuel bales around whilst they're loading up with bombs. A bit of recipe for disaster. But that's, this one's a mixture of uh, plastic and photo etch and... Um, the, the trolley was the best bit because it was all separate photo etch parts that you had to glue together in order to get the spine. So that's uh, prototypical. And the little tractor there is a resin job. And obviously painted the little Airfix figures because they're working away getting the uh, mozzie ready to fly. Another, there's my early attempt at building the uh, SM79 in an outrageous um, paint scheme. This That's all brush painted. I've painted all that. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Now we come down, and here is all Corgi. But this, uh, apart from the vehicles, uh, but the Corgi, the, all these aeroplanes are what they called Alder Tag. These were all the aircraft that were, uh, you know, went into the uh, beginning of the war and the Battle of Britain. So you've got your Junkers, you've got your Heinkels. You've got your Messerschmitts, and you've got your Stukas. And that's all that the Germans had when they, you know, declared war on us. Quite a, quite a powerful sort of a range of uh, aircraft there that they had, because obviously they got their, they cut their teeth on the Spanish Civil War to develop their engines. And on the shelf below is the British. Yeah, so we have the Blenheim, we have the Hurricane. Uh, we have three Spitfires there. Uh, they're in the markings. The reason I've got three mar uh, Spitfires, and they're all the same apart from the codes, is that is they are the actual representation of aircraft that flew from Biggin Hill. So uh, Corgi did a set of uh, each one of the aircraft, so I've bought the set. Another little fuel bowser, good old Airfix. And I think that one at the back is at Avro Anderson or something, or other, yeah. But these these are the uh, aircraft that we had when it came to the Battle of Britain. Thank God we had the Spitfire and the Hurricane because the other aircraft was a little bit wanting, to be honest. Uh, that's, that's it. I think that's it for this room. There are oh, some more models there. There's another Flying Fortress and uh, the Ju-88 Heinkel, another 30-second one, but if ever I would decide to get around to doing it. So there we are. So a bit dusty, admittedly. But that's, uh, yeah, and that thing there, cut the cars at the top there, I say my mother, rest her soul, uh, drove the little Cinquecento, and I remember being in Italy with her, where we had a little Cinquecento, one of the cars, and that one, the tour from 1994, because I went down to Tunbridge to see the Tour de France, and that, when they all went past, being there for hours and hours and hours, when they all went past in 30 seconds, <laughs> and it was all over, I took that off one of the signposts of one of the trees as a memento. So 1994, yeah. 
Oh, well, there you are. You've got to have an alien machine, haven't you? There we go. War of the Worlds. Love that film. And uh, when I found out you could get the model of the alien machine, uh, yeah, I thought, well, well, why not? So there we go. <laughs> there we are. So, yeah, the Flying Fortress, the... Uh, yeah, the Lancaster... With the associate vehicles and the, you know, painted the figures, the aircraft, you know, that you can get 145th figures and things. So, got the figures for it, give it a little bit of something to do. I think they've been addressed by the sergeant major there whilst they're having a, a little right eye down from having, I don't know, doing a bit of maintenance. It looks like there's an oil can in front of them there. They were, and of course, the good old Liberator. So, they were the three bombers, really, or you know, two, or two Americans. I know there's a Halifaxes, so I haven't got no Halifaxes. And yes, the wallpaper is um, courtesy of my daughter. But this is where all the main models that are, you know, really precious to me, that don't live in the shed, especially the posher ones. So they come up in here and get dusty in here. But the cabinet is full of the uh, models of all the cars. So there we go. Uh, what else have we got in here? Yeah, obviously, well, that's too. That's no good. You can't see that, but that's obviously a nice picture of the Lancaster flying over a field of poppies. And uh, this is the bedroom, as you can sort of see. Yeah, there's a Defiant being uh, attacked by two Messerschmitts, and of course, when they first attacked the Defiants, the Messerschmitts, uh, the German pilots, didn't know what it was, thought it was a Spitfire or a Hurricane, and obviously went went to attack and was surprised to find. Or possibly, you know, the last thing they saw was the fact that guns were firing from the uh, rear turret of the uh, Defiant. So there we are. But they soon learnt their lessons and then uh, the Defiant was put onto night fighting duties because uh, it wasn't up to the job of uh, taking on the day fighters. Right, there we go. That's, I think that's this room covered. So there we are, people. There's uh, a majority of me models. There's still more, believe it or not, including uh, a loft layout which I haven't gone up there to show. Um, but I've noticed that I've, I've got me uh, scales wrong while I've been chatting, right? The Corgi models are 172nd scale, yeah? The the bigger models are 148th scale, including their associated vehicles. They're, as I said, 1 200th. There's a 132nd scale there and 148th scale. The cars are, one, as I said, 143 scale and 118th scale. But uh, if you listen to me video, I think I'm getting my scales a bit mixed up. But yeah, it's Corgi Aircraft, 172nd scale, 148 scale for the plastic models, 118th scale for the cars, big cars, and 143 for the uh, smaller cars, made by Vanguards, which is Corgi again, and some other companies, that are Mini Champs. Uh, yeah, so there we are. So just to, just to recap that. But this is, um, I've made this video. Uh, for for my friend Robert, you know, because he he could see that from the uh, the train videos I make, he could see other models in the shed. But these ones are special. I mean, like uh, the Corgi ones, which are all the uh, Battle of Britain and the German uh, Alder tag. They're sort of like uh, quite special now, so they they come up here so they don't get damaged by being in a shed. And I've already covered up the poshers, yeah, to stop the dust getting to them because they are so precious. <laughs> uh, but yeah, unfortunately, very dusty. Even though this is my daughter's old room, um, I've got to redecorate it. But I, I moved in there quickly with the cabinets because I could then save my models. Right, so there you are. All right, so hopefully get my scales sorted out because I was getting them all mixed up whilst uh, making the video but yeah so 172nd, 148s, 132s, 1 200s they're the scales that you're looking at and 1 18th car, 1 18th cars yeah all right <laughs> okay that's it guys bye bye